from Xfinity Center. This is the Northwestern Mutual Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. This is Bruce Bosner. The Terps take it over the St. Francis 96-55. Bruce, what did you see out there tonight? I saw a great effort by Jake Lehman. I saw a team that got out of the box quickly. This game was over. 16-3. Right. to three, It was done. Do Jake, you, yeah, go ahead. Play in Carolina sped up Maryland? I think it was a learning experience. And they came out today and they realized how badly that a start affected them. And they weren't going to let it happen to a team of lesser talent. They didn't. 96-55, nothing else to say. Hey, it took St. Francis so there was 7.34 to go in the first half before they got to double digits. That point was 25-10 Maryland. What do you think of that Robert Carter stat line tonight? Unbelievable. Uh, 9 for 10 from the free throw line, 20 points, 5 for 7, 6 rebounds, 6 assists, and no turnovers, as well as uh, Mello Trimble. He only had 3 points, but uh, 7 assists, a couple turnovers. Uh, Jalen Brantley had a nice game. I like Jalen Brantley. He scores his first basket as a Maryland Terrapin. With about two minutes to go in the first half, then he comes back and hits a three, a couple free throws. He has seven points in the first half. Terps leading at halftime, 45-24. They were 15 for 22 at that point and only had three turnovers. Terps are out rolling big. I think Diamond Stone thought he was back in high school tonight. <laughs> I mean, the way he was scoring, seven for nine from the field. And uh, also uh, Michael Sikowski, three for three. And DeMonte died four for four. Ivan Bender looked really good in my You know what? Up, I thought that was the bright light of tonight was the way Ivan Bender played. You and me both knew that Jake Lehman would come alive. Sooner or later, you're right. up in a big game. I'm really happy for Jalen Brantley because he finally looked comfortable on the floor. I think they should have given him a few more minutes. Are you still going to New York Tuesday? No, I'm not. just not well enough. I don't even have the voice really to do the postgame show here. Okay. You're okay. You're okay. So uh, we're seven and one now. The Carolina game. I think we could still be a top five team this week. Mm -hmm. With uh, Kentucky losing, looks like Michigan State will be number one. But you know what? Strange. Doesn't matter how you are now. It no. really doesn't. No. The only shame of it is this could have been the first week in the history of Maryland during the regular season. It could have been number one. But they lost, so they never not. made it toward the championship year. Nope, they finished the season number one. They were number two during the year. All and right. they had another shot. I think it was back in 1998. Maryland played at Kentucky. Had they beaten Kentucky, it's the Steve Francis team who would have been number one. Couldn't get it done that week. But look, it's about how you finish. You keep bringing that up. You're absolutely correct. So, what's your takeaway from the Carolina game? Seeing Maryland come out again here. I told Coach Sturgeon yesterday. I thought the team played fantastic. If we got him on a neutral court, if we got him here, mm -hmm. there's no doubt in my mind. And I hope and pray, all right, listen to me well, I hope and pray that that's the team we have to play to get to the Final Four. I'd sign a contract right now, all right? Okay, I Fair think enough. we're better than they are. They had a birthday. They played unbelievable. Give them credit. They outplayed us. But they're not going to play like that neutral. They're not going to play like that here. And if Jalen Brantley can actually play ball for Maryland and give Mello and Suleiman some rest, it'll be a lot different story. So UConn comes up. It's Tuesday night in Madison Square Garden. UConn at 5-2. and two. They beat Michigan 74-60. They lost to Syracuse 79-76. Gonzaga 73-70. And just the other day, they beat Sacred Heart, the powerhouse of Sacred Heart, 82-49. They have Sterling Gibbs, has some history for Maryland. They have uh, Sam Cassell Jr., and they're looking for consistency there, but they love playing in Madison Square Garden. What's your thoughts about playing in Madison Square Garden? Oh, I think it's a neutral game. I think there'll be as many Maryland people, if not more, uh, up there for that game. Of course, the rest of the place will be rooting for UConn. Right. But uh, hey, they call, they're trying to call UConn the sixth borough of New York, trying to get that thing going there. Uh, yeah, that's a, it's a quality program. It's, it's a quality game, so yep. we'll see what happens. But uh, look, a great start so far. We're 7-1, and one, and that's all we got right now is basketball and soccer. Soccer still 1-1 in overtime. Is it? Yeah. The interns there watching the game instead of helping us. So Maryland doesn't have a football game until September 3rd when Howard comes into Burke uh, Stadium. Are you fired up yet for this game? No, not really. <laughs> not really. 
but you know what? We have an easier schedule next year. I, could, you know, I could see six wins next year. I really could. Well, we have Minnesota here. Who else do we have? We have uh, Purdue here. Purdue, Minnesota coming. Thank you, Mason. We have Howard. We have UCF, who's coming off a zero season. Scott Frost, the head coach there. We're, we're down there in Orlando next year. It was nice to see Durkin out here. I'm very encouraged about getting some young coordinators and, and to get on the recruiting. Uh, who's coming up? I uh, hear you got a big guest on the sports. Yeah, we got tomorrow. Roman Stubbs from the Washington Post tomorrow morning. We're giving you the day off to get your voice back. And maybe we'll do one of those home things on Tuesday night after the game for UConn. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. Do a little post-game show. Yeah, do a post-game show. That sounds great. Tell well, us yeah. about our new sponsor, man. Well, a new sponsor, of course, Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company. want to thank Dan Schiffman. Support for Terp Talk Game Day comes from Dan Schiffman of Northwestern Mutual. Team up with the right financial partner to advise you on your personal and financial plans. You and Northwestern Mutual, stronger together. You can reach Dan at 301-698-8955 or on the web at www.danschiffman.com. That's D-A-N-S-C-H-I-F-F-M-A-N, danschiffman.com, and 301-698-8955. And we still have Meyer Consulting Engineer with us again this year. It's going to be a great year of Maryland basketball. Uh, Terps play on Tuesday. Terps play again on Saturday at 430. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the Big Ten season starting on December 30th at 5 o'clock on Wednesday night. What kind of time is that? Thank you, Big Ten Network. What it, in the world? Well, they love what they do at lacrosse, Bruce, so they decided to do it for basketball. I know. It's a work day. That's not New Year's Eve. No. Nope. That's an outright work day. It is. But, hey, you got a lot coming up with the Sports Maven 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then in the nest, 9 o'clock on Sunday on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. And we are working on getting DJ Durkin for Terp Talk on Wednesday. That sounds great. So for Wayne Viner, well, that's me. For Bruce Parker, that's Bruce. That's it for tonight. The Terps win 96-55. Say goodnight, Bruce. Good night, everybody. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, Call Meyer Consulting Engineers.